A lot of you have been mentioning how you'd really like me to talk about my glazes in the videos and quite frankly my first response was oh my god that's a little overwhelming uh, and then the other day I was unloading this kiln load and I thought well why don't I just give it a go with this and uh, see how I do. Uh, so today I'm going to talk to you about the O2 firing. Uh, those of you that have read my book will know that I have a Blau kiln, this beautiful kiln with a um, computer on it so I can write programs uh, and the kiln will follow it exactly as I say. Uh, when I first started writing the programs, I modeled them on um, Brit's book, the Hone 10 Glazes. So I refer to them like the O2 is modeled on his O2. So basically the O2 you fire up in oxidation all the way up to cone 10. Then I have a soak in reduction. So oxidation all the way up, reduction at the end, which is different from all my other firings. This bodes well for those of you that are firing in electric, because all these glazes that you're seeing here, you could easily do in your electric kilns up to cone 10. They would look a little bit different, but not a lot. And the other thing is most of these recipes are also in uh, Brit's book, with the exception of the charcoal because that's one I made up years ago, uh, but I have put it up on my glazy.org page. So this is Candice Black and it's an oil spot glaze and it's loaded up with cobalt. So it's a bit of a pricey glaze to make, uh, but very, very beautiful. Now I have glazed the oil spot glaze, let it sit for a bit. And then I put a liner of Hamada White on the inside. How I glaze these I realize is a little different than how most people probably would but with oil spots as you know they can run. They're called an oil spot because the iron in the glaze when it reaches temperature releases an atom of oxygen boils up through the glaze and bursts on the surface and that's what makes the spot and then there's a little crust around each spot and you hold the temperature and the crust smooths out. Well as they explode they explode outwards uh, so it's really easy to get runs. Um, now I only had one run on this firing, uh, so that's pretty good, grounded off, no big deal, and it's right near the bottom. So when I was first glazing with these, there were a lot of mistakes. So where I've ended up is I glazed the Candace Black at an SG of 160, and I dip it in the glaze, fully in the glaze, and I hold it there for about six seconds. Then I lift it up and it's still got the glaze in it. Uh, maybe I poured out a little bit and I basically balance it on the end on the side of my glaze bucket like so. It doesn't weigh so much so then it's full of glaze and I keep the glaze on the inside for another eight seconds and then I pour it out. Now what this does is it makes it so the glaze isn't as thick on the outside, so you're not gonna have those glaze runs, and it makes it thick enough on the inside that you're gonna get more significant oil spots. It makes a huge difference. Uh, so then the Hamada White is over top. This is done the same way, and you can see lots, I mean, it's really hard with a shiny black glaze to see the oil spots, but they are there. And then as you look at the outside, there's no runs. Anywhere where you see where the glaze is thicker, you get the bigger spots and the Hamada White. Okay, so that's that. Now for the mugs, I thought that would look great too. This here is Noxima Blue. This glaze fires beautifully in oxidation. That's also in Brit's book. And then there's the Hamada Rust. This is Hamada Rust on an iron rich clay. And then this is the Hamada Rust on basically a, a B-mix, a porcelainous stoneware. So you can see there's a, there's a fair bit of a difference. Um, not a ton actually, but there is a difference. Now for my mugs and other things with the Hamada Rust, I actually like to put the Anuka glaze over top. So this is the Hamada Rust with Anuka. So I would have glazed the vase, let it sit for a bit, then I dipped it in the Anuka glaze once, dum 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 count, so I dipped it to there, then I dipped it again to here, held it in, brought it out, waited, dum dum dum, and then I went in again, and then I went in again. So you have different layers. The specific gravity for the Nuka glaze and the white liner 
was 150. And I'm guessing that the specific gravity for the Hamada Rust would also been around 150. This is another oil spot. This was actually a refire. I was healing a grind. You can see where it uh, ran, but it's sealed up nicely. This is the Mashiko oil spot, which is a really, really beautiful oil spot. Super, super nice. Oh, my charcoal glaze. So this is a glaze I made up literally decades ago when I used to fire just in electric kilns. And it's up on the glazy.org page, so you can you can find that. It's, it's very nice. And that's about it uh, for this little glaze lesson. There we go, Hamada Rust and Nuka once again on some ramen bowls. Please support my book, because every time you buy the book, you're donating to the project, and that's a good thing. Caught on, and let me know what you think of my first glaze video, and maybe I'll do more. Okay, bye.